I will miss waking up next to my daddy in the morning and saying, Daddy, it's time to get up. We would get up and have breakfast, usually cereal, fruit, and definitely a yogurt. Yummy. We would then talk about what we are going to do today. Today we're enjoying a beautiful day at the beach. My dad would pack up cheese and crackers, pretzels, fruits, and fruit snacks, water, and a Capri Sun for me to enjoy at the beach. We'd put our bathing suits, shirts, and hats on to keep us fresh in the sun. Oh, what a beautiful sunny day. We then get all my beach toys, balls, trucks, kite, pack up the bike and our toddler trailer for our mile bike ride down to the beach, 30th Ave South. My daddy would play his music and off we go on our bike ride to the beach. I would sit in the toddler trailer and just look around, enjoy the fresh air, breeze, trees, birds chirping, and look at all the cool things we would pass on our mile ride down. I never complained because we we're going to have so much fun. I would point out any cats and her dogs or anything else, any cats or dogs or anything else cool that I saw. We'd get to the beach ramp and we'd pull me and he would pull me up the ramp on his bike and then I would get out, put my feet in the sand and see this beautiful ocean. My dad would pull the bike and tile the trailer through the sand. We'd put up the umbrella and start to play. Sometimes my daddy was so excited to get to the beach he would forget to stop and take me out of the trailer. His flip-flops would throw sand on me and I would yell, Daddy, Daddy, and he would stop and let me get out and walk down. My daddy would get the kite started and watch and help. I was a great helper. Once up in the air, I would grab the string and hold as tightly as possible as the kite climbed higher and higher in the air. My daddy would then tie up the kite on the toddler trailer so it wouldn't blow away. We would we would then would dump out all the beach toys and start to dig holes and make sand castles. I would ask my daddy to get some water in the bucket to use for my next idea, my next invention. I had a lot of great ideas. We would go down to the water together and I would run to the edge of the water and back while I filled up the buckets for my holes and sand castles. The water buckets were really heavy, so my dad would carry them back to our spot. We would make big castles with our buckets. Sometimes I would step on them, so we would have to start over. Once we did that for a while, it was time to go play in the tide pools. My dad would take a bucket to see if we'd find any small fish or other items to put in the bucket. One time we found hundreds of starfish. I would just run through the pools, splashing and enjoying the fresh smells of the ocean breeze. The feeling of beach sand and water running through my toes. The sight of the waves, blue sky and clouds making this perfect day to spend with my daddy. Now it's time to go jump in the waves with my daddy. He would pick me up and walk me out about his waist high and as the waves came crashing to shore he'd pick me up over them and would just jiggle and smile and splash me down when the waves passed. Everyone that has met me knows the sound of my laugh and sees that giggle and smile. Please close your eyes and you can hear it and see it. It's refreshing. We would splash in the water for a while sometimes. I would get, I would get completely wet from, head, from my hat down. I could feel the nice cool water all around me. That was so much fun. Wow, that was also tiring. It's time for snacks. My dad and I would go back to the umbrella and sit in our chairs and have our snacks and drinks. We would watch the osprey, pelicans, and seagulls splash in the water looking for fish. Sometimes we'd even see dolphins swimming. Very cool. I would ask my daddy if I could, feel the se if I could feed the seagulls, and he would always say yes and bring something for them to eat. Today we had some goldfish crackers. I would start tossing them food and they would get really close to me and I would run away. Too funny. Once we finished our snacks, it was time for a little more playtime. I would run and my daddy would chase me, or he would run and I would chase him up and down the beach. My mind was always going and I would find things while we were running and bring them over to my sandcastles, such as seaweed, sticks, shells for decorations. By this time I'm starting to get tired.
And I know my daddy's tired too. I would just tell my daddy, I'm tired and ready to go home. We would start picking up all our toys, and daddy would do most of the work. I would just watch my daddy and I would wind the kite down and pack everything up. My daddy would pull the bike and the toddler trailer through the sand, and I would walk to the top of the walkway, and we would speed down the ramp. On the way home, after all that fun, I would fall asleep in the toddler trailer. My daddy would gently take me out of the toddler trailer, and we would rinse off and change our clothes. It's now nap time for my daddy and I. We would read two to three quick stories, and we would both fall asleep. After one and a half, two hour nap, I would wake my daddy up to start the rest of our day. I would usually get up and go play for a few minutes while my daddy got moving and started lunch. Lunch was usually noodles and butter, fruit, and of course a yogurt. We would eat lunch and discuss what we were going to do the rest of the day before dinner. Today we decided to go into my Lego room and build Legos. I love building Legos with my daddy. My daddy would build his old Legos and some new Legos from directions so I could play with them. I used my imagination and built my own creations and they were very cool. My daddy would help if I needed a certain piece. We would search through all the different Lego boxes to build the coolest toy. The Legos I liked to play with were Star Wars, trucks, boats, castles, and of course my creations. We would build and play for hours until I wanted to do something else. My daddy can no longer play with Legos today because it hurts too much to play without me. I hope one day he began to build again. It's now time for dinner and my daddy would let me watch my Star Wars or PJ Masks shows while he was cooking sometimes. I love watching those shows and would pretend to be characters in those shows while playing. Today my daddy and I are making homemade pizzas on the big green egg. I love playing with the dough. I would make my own creations with dough by pressing straws or shapes into the dough using my toys before we'd put the sauce and toppings on. I would also get to make my own spices creations in a bowl while I made pizzas. My daddy would cook the best pizzas. We would sit on the couch and watch my shows while having dinner. I sometimes spent more time watching than eating, and my daddy has to keep reminding me to eat. If I ate enough, I get to pick a candy out of the magical blue basket, which is full of different types of candy that is in our pantry. It's so exciting. During dinner today, my daddy said we were going to watch the full moon rise at the beach tonight. Yippee! I really like watching the full moon. We get to also play at the beach while we wait. I decided to have I decided to have Pez candies today for my dessert. I like pulling Pez candies out of the dispenser. My daddy was saving a very old Star Wars Pez for me to open one day. I'll never get to open that cool C three PO Pez dispenser. It's time to go to the beach and watch the full moon rise. Sometimes Grandma and Grandpa would go and watch with us. So fun. Me and my daddy sit up our, our chairs on the beach for the big show. We went to so many full moon rises, I even saw one come right out of the ocean and have a pinkish, have a pinkish color. So very cool. I saw one just like that on Wednesday. Came right out of the ocean, except I was there by myself. No Henry. Nobody wants that in their life. While we wait for the moonrise, I get to look for shark's teeth, put my feet in the water, and chase my daddy around. I get to run up on the dunes and down the dunes and build things out of the items I find in the sand. It's now time for the moonrise, my daddy and I sit on our chairs. Everyone, everyone imagine the moon coming up and now my daddy sits alone and broken going forward. Nothing is ever the same without me. We leave the beach and I go home and take a quick bath. I enjoy bath time. 
We get to play with foam soap, make different types of flavors of ice cream and soups. My diagonal pretends to drink my yummy soup. I sometimes even get to spray the soap foam myself wherever I want. I spray them all over the bathtub walls. I even was starting to show my daddy how long I could hold my breath on the water in the bathtub. My daddy would count. Bath time is now over and it's time for bed. My daddy gets me dried off and brush our teeth. I get to pick out three different books, stories to read before bed. One of my favorites is the Glowing Dark Stars, Moons and Clouds book, where my daddy on each page would charge the page under the bedside lamp and then would turn off the light and the book would glow in the dark. It was so very cool. I would put, point out things on the pages and help read the book. We had so many books to choose from each night. Little Blue, little blue Truck, Time for a Hug, and the Dinosaur Search and Find book, which was the last book my daddy saw me looking at the day before I went to sleep forever by the evil person. Now that I'm resting and waiting for my daddy, I have time to think about you, the evil person's family, lawyers, and therapists and support system. You were always team evil person and never team Henry, except for maybe Tom. He's the only person I remotely feel bad for because he's guilty by association. Guess what? Now all of you have my death on your hands and conscience. Please let that soak in. Now all of you have my death on your hand and conscience. Even to this day, some of you are still team evil person, which is extremely sad. We know who you are. I was never given the opportunity to be protected from the evil person. Everyone in the family just continued to enable the evil person. For some of you, that is still going on today. I'm not sure how you sleep at night. Before and after my death and even in the aftermath, and always remember you enabled a coward who killed me, a sleeping three-year-old boy. You must be so proud. If the evil person is someone you want to be associated with, I can't help with that. Just remember at the end of the day, that's something you will now think about the rest of your life. Anyone associated with the evil person, in my mind, is dead to me and my daddy forever. The only time my daddy ever, want, ever wants to hear from you is when you send the message to my daddy that the evil person is dying or dead same goes with my so-called half-brother, Corey, who's one of the evil person's biggest enablers. That way, me and my daddy can rest peacefully and have a party celebrating the death of a child killer. If you ever run into my daddy out in public, don't talk to him. Walk away, because nothing good will come from approaching my daddy. You'll probably wonder why. The reason is for a simple fact. You were always team evil person, even no matter how much my daddy mentioned to you something was off or wrong, you just ignored my daddy and continued to turn a blind, blind eye and enable the evil person. Good luck living with that the rest of your life. Changing your tune now and asking forgiveness is too late. All your churchgoers, such as Catherine and Pete, I highly recommend you that you let go. Whoever you think is up there can't forgive an evil person like her and her associates. Was I or my daddy ever a priority for his family? My daddy did everything he could to raise me and navigate the evil person and the family while working with the entitled selfish narcissist. My daddy and I remember when the family would just say, oh, that's just the evil person. Everyone just gave her a pass and left my daddy on an island by himself. Guess what, you're all now complicit. Just know every time my cousin Kenneth, who is a year older than me, who I was actively living with at the time, reaches his milestone, the entire Lewis family must now reflect and think, that should also be me. Think to yourself, I'm somewhat responsible for Henry not being here today. I hope they can sleep on that. Each one of you will carry that burden forever, and my daddy and I know what that's like. The adults in the room chose the evil person over me, a defenseless three-year-old. All my daddy ever did was attempt to protect me 
and ask for 50-50 custody, which isn't something that's totally outside of my daddy's rights. My daddy did more for me than any of you ever did combined. Your family is just like my daddy's family. It's ruined forever. My dad can now get a bit of peace knowing that you, the Lewis family, is ruined. And some of you have fallen on hard times. Fortunately, not hard enough. You deserve everything you get and then some. Especially that fraud Catherine and her when it's convenient for her religious Bible beliefs. One day I hope the reality sets in for Catherine and Corey and you will one day get what you deserve just like your sister. You still serve to this day. I wish nothing but pain and misery on you and your family. Just remember, no thousand-year-old book will save you from that. My dad will always be fighting for his peace and quiet, while the evil person will enjoy the quiet of slamming cell doors and the smell of poop. To the evil person or supporters, it's finally time to take the garbage out. For Corey Oliver, half-brother, Catherine Robinson, aunt, and Amarna Garcia, William Melrow Kent, Ryan Ellen McFarlane, friends, Pete Philippus, Mary McCarthy, Rachel Barty Edwards, the Mayo Clinic staff, child custody lawyers, Laura A. Mel Laura a. Mason, Felicia Lane Walker, and her therapist, Etta Etlinger, welcome to this nightmare that you helped create. Your nightmare and pain and suffering has just started. When you least expect it, reminders will come to you to remind you what side of this tragedy you decided to stand behind and what you took part in and allowed. My daddy said, just because someone offers you money for services that is against all ethical morality doesn't mean you should do it. I'm talking to you, the money-hungry lawyers. Team Little Henry will be making sure you never forget what side you chose for the rest of time. Just when you think you had enough, more will continue to come. I'll be resting in my I will be resting in my peace and quiet space, patiently waiting for my daddy to tell me how much he misses me and loves me. I'll be waiting for my big hug, a chance to blow up chance to blow up one last Christmas decoration one more time and to finish that bedtime story I long for every day. While I wait, my daddy will have the burden of what happened to me and his family following him wherever he goes, 24-7, 365. Thank you to my daddy's support system. I can't thank you enough. He would not be standing here today without you. Thank you to the Play Garden School, where my chair symbol was a dragonfly. And of course, Team Little Henry. Love Henry. Aloha. Yeah.